Six weeks of hard work culminated in the glorious moment of reuniting Oish back with her kill. Only now, the whole area around it was way stronger. We could now go back to being regular cruisers, spending the remainder of our haul out taking care of such blissfully mundane yet visually rewarding tasks like painting. And of course some other jobs, necessary or at least desirable before we could splash and set sail again. Thus, quest number 10. Paint, electricity and propulsion. While Bartek took care of some last bits of sanding, I made myself extremely useful trying to film local fauna. But as the reptile wasn't too keen on being followed around, I switched to a bit more productive task of painting. Mm -hmm. We weren't too sure when our friend Nano told us about the almost miraculous coverage of the Sigma Primer, but he was right, it is fabulous. So the whole bottom in the saloon got a fresh coat of primer. One of the tasks on our list was lowering the waterline. Yes, lowering. I know, we are weird. We assumed that after getting rid of the engine, the additional ballast and a lot of might need them, we could go down at least 20 centimeters which matched up with the still visible previous waterline, perhaps even the original. While I put the masking tape, Bartek did some finishing touches with the sander. It was finally time for the primer. Because we are such skilled videographers, it took a while to realize that we are filming the opposite side from the one we are actually painting.
and so the battery ran out again and the boot stripe was painted off camera using what we thought was ferrari red but turned out to actually be fire extinguisher red oh we also applied fairing here and there to retain at least some aqua dynamics it looked patchy but gave a decent enough shape We were told by our friend and a distributor of Sigma paint that to get the best result and avoid flaking off the antifoiling paint, which did happen to us on our previous boat, it is best to put the first layer of antifoiling while the primer is still tacky. Which in this tropical heat meant I was painting the primer and Bartek was right behind me with the antifoiling paint. So, while filming this metamorphosis, the card and our action cam got full. No problem, right? Unfortunately, when I tried to back up and clear it, I found out that my laptop is dead. Because Bartek's laptop died two months earlier when we were in Guatemala, and my phone has been showing my favorite no space left on device warning almost constantly at this point, we had no easy way to clear the card. We had just a couple of things to do before we could splash and start paying slip fee instead of the yard fee, which with our melting budget meant lack of filming capabilities were not a priority for us at this point. So this would be the last footage of the refit, if it wasn't for the swap meet three days later, where we found a GoPro labeled not working for 10 bucks that came with a whopping 8 gig card. It had some problems, but after Bartek fixed the power button, we had a semi-working camera again. Nagrywamy! Nowym Xiaomi! Just in time for rather reassembly. I co, że chcesz go obniżyć jeszcze, czy co? Rysuję, no.
we also put in the shaft and prop. Ooh, shiny. Then things got even better when one day the package with our new battery cells finally arrived. Bartek put them into a pack, a modest 32 amp hour 12 volt battery, but capable of continuous 800 amp discharge, so we could easily run our windlass off it, or weld stuff if we ever chose to. We finally had some power, as our old AGMs weren't even limping, they were convulsing at this point. And then, just like that, we splashed. And I'm sorry, but this is the only documentation of the process, there was just too much on our heads to film. But everything went well, nothing leaked, we were back in the water, exhausted but happy. We weren't done though yet, especially that Christmas came 11 days early that year and brought us parts for our electric propulsion system. Lego, mm -hmm. First up, break in the motor brushes. Then Bartek created a wall that would hold the plumber bearings that would convert the thrust loads from the shaft to the boat as there was no gearbox anymore. And that was it. Our SD cards were full, laptops not working and we focused all our energy on getting to a point that we could leave the marina. We will do a more in-depth video about our setup soon, so if you have any specific questions, drop us a comment down below. The very last video we made was the first test of the full assembly. We left the marina mid-January and headed for Linton. This was not the end of our quests though. We still had and have a lot to do on Oish. We would just continue the work on Anchor.